Hi friends, I wanted to do a, just a quick recap of April's JW Broadcasting. This issue is not necessarily about all of the things that the rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses must do for the organization, but it's about whether or not all that they are doing is good enough. Samuel Hurd goes on and on and on with examples of how they need to analyze themselves to do things better. Take a look. In addressing our theme, is your best good enough? I like to start by reading Galatians 6, 4. It says, but let each one examine his own actions, and then he will have cause for rejoicing in regard to himself alone and not in comparison with the other person. We're told to examine our own actions. So ask yourself, how am I doing spiritually? Well, that's funny that Samuel Heard reads this scripture. I want to put it into context. Take a look at this. Verse 3, For if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Because you see, the governing body members are men. They're not divine. They're not Christ's brothers. They're men. And they think that they are something, don't they? <laughs> but let every man prove his own work. Verse 5, For every man shall bear his own burden. Are any of these men bearing any burdens? Do they ever talk about what they are doing for the brothers? You'll see a portion of a clip later about um, a, a couple, a witness couple from a Rwanda who had experienced and suffered through tremendous um, hardship and loss. And there's a portion in the clip where they commend the brothers for providing financial assistance. You'll notice that the organization did not provide for them. It was the brothers. Am I happy with my attendance at Christian meetings? Do I participate by sharing meaningful comments as able? How about my personal study of the Bible? Let me examine my involvement in the ministry. Could I do better in preparing for my return visits? Do I conduct any Bible studies with interested ones? But you may say, I'm doing my best. What more can I do? Exactly. Samuel Hurd continues going on and on and on, pressuring and guilting the witnesses to do more and more and more. These witnesses are giving their best. They're giving these their lives for this criminal organization. It's just beyond belief. Take a good look at your best. Scrutinize it. Examine very closely all you're doing with the time that you have. What do you see? Is your best good enough? It may be. It may not. One of the reasons why I got out of this organization so many years ago was because I felt I could not do any more than I was already doing. I couldn't be any better than I already was. It was my best. I was giving my best and it still wasn't good enough. So now you have the indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness watching this video, stressed out, full of anxiety, now recognizing that they must do more, that maybe it's not good enough. And Samuel Hurd goes into the analogy of a runner training for a race. I, I, I do, I run races. I know how hard a person has to train. Take a look at what happens. Eats the right things, keeps a lean, healthy body, wears the best running shoes, and so forth. He gives his best, but loses the race to someone faster. His best was not good enough. I've cut out a lot from the clip, but friends, he loses the race. The runner loses the race. You see him on the ground. Now, what does the loser, what does losing the race mean to an indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness? Remember, we were always told, keep your eyes on that prize, right? You got to endure to the end. Losing the race means you lose your life to an indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness. 
in comparison to enduring to the end. I'm just, I, I'm just sometimes at a loss for words in dealing with the di diabolical evil of this organization and what they're doing to these poor people. I used a lot of my strength walking from door to door, climbing stairs and so forth. And yet no one let me get past my introduction. What does the householder see in your face? When she opens the door, do you look happy or sad? The message we're commissioned to deliver today is the good news of the kingdom. We expect it to change sometime in the near future. Did you notice what he slipped in there? We expect it to change in the future. What, the good news will not be good news anymore? The end is coming, yet they're building the house of Ramapo, and they said that the building isn't even going to be started until the end of 2021. Well, at one point in the video, he explains that attending the meetings is not good enough. You need to prepare better. You need to answer better. But friends, they haven't been attending meetings for at least a year. What are they even talking about attending meetings for? You attend all congregation meetings and pay rapt attention with your mind. You're to be commended. That's one benefit we receive from our meeting attendance. This is another benefit of regular meeting attendance. Do you give comments at meetings? Are they well prepared? Do they encourage your brothers and sisters? Are you giving your best? Are you doing your best? Is your best good enough? It goes without saying that that's good. We can slop a pig and he'll enjoy it, but give the same garbage to a cow and she'll ignore it. Only Jehovah knows when we're doing our best. So then they move on to this family who's obviously in good standing. They do a lot and explains all the things that they do. They, they you know, maintain the kingdom hall and they help with the finances and they go out in service and all of that. But then they listen to this talk about Philip the Evangelizer and realize that they can do more. Because of the persecution, Philip had to flee from Jerusalem to Samaria. But Philip, friends, in Acts chapter 8, let me, let me show you what Philip's message was. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. He did not preach watchtower doctrine, friends. He preached about, and this is Acts chapter 8, okay? So Christ had just been resurrected and transfigured and, and, and carried up to heaven, okay? So now the apostles and the disciples are very, very bold and they're preaching Christ, not Watchtower Doctrine. So I've cut out a lot of this clip, but it's all about the witnesses doing more and more for the organization. Check it out. Samaria was largely untouched by the preaching work. Philip declared the good news zealously And many believed and got baptized. We tried to make the most of the situation and preach zealously. Like Philip. Very clever watchtower. They end this segment with emotions, uh, very emotional music. And as um, after the householder waves them in, because very obviously this couple had recognized their previous best was not good enough. So therefore, after analyzing themselves and doing more, then the householder finally responds. 
And then the, the audience is clapping, which it was because their children ended up doing more after learning about Philip and ended up, I think they went into Gilead or something like that. So as the viewer is pondering over, well, what can I do more? This music is heightening their emotions as they are influenced over the success of this actor. It's an actor. So now here are just a couple of clips from this couple from Rwanda who, friends, we have to pray for them because they obviously suffered tremendous hardship. But notice how many times they say, killing, murder, killed. They're very, no doubt, very much exploited by the organization. And then the interviewer is completely emotionless. With us today, we have Eugene and Odile Nezadeayo. The killing was happening all over the country. So um, my parents and my brother were killed. Mm -hmm. I saw that some religious leaders were involved in killing people and genocide. I couldn't believe how people who were previously living together, friendly, now they start killing their neighbors. Oh, that's touching. My family had no money and they could not buy food. I remember my mom, I can still see her lying on the bed in complete despair, not knowing what she can do for us children. The elders told me that my brothers and sisters from abroad offered us this gift. I can still see my mom crying. Uh, because of the joy and thankfulness of what the brothers had done. What has helped you to not become a bitter person? The preaching work is very important to me because um, the more I talk about uh, the Bible promises, they become real to me. For example, when I talk about the resurrection hope, the condition of the death, this helped me to feel that my loved ones are not suffering anymore and they are waiting to be resurrected. So this makes me feel happy. Christians during that time were facing persecution. So they're still bragging about the Nehemiah video and all of the actors who slaved for them and bragging about their Mount Nebo studio. But I want to just show you once again the power of music and how it influences emotions. Now the viewer was influenced by these actors who analyzed themselves, they did more, the householder finally invites them in, then they hear about this persecution of Rwanda, now they hear this, you know, whimsical music looking at animals, who doesn't love animals, right? Now they're going to hear about the poor souls who maybe did not analyze themselves to do better and how Satan used and abused them. Where do I stand? Where are my boundaries going to be set? It's really hard because it could be the, the difference between having a friend and not having a friend. Over the years, I've talked to several who perhaps drifted a little bit in the truth. This is just too hard. The people that were my friends are starting to leave the truth. I feel quite lonely. Even though it was hard, I resisted the temptation, but someone close to me who faced the same pressure gave in and ended up leaving Jehovah. When I heard that she was disfellowshipped, um, it was just, it just completely hit me so hard because you really are just worried about 
what is going to happen with their future. After a while, uh, she did come back to Jehovah. She's raising a child on her own. Having observed what has happened to people who've left the truth and the baggage they sometimes end up carrying when they come back into the truth, it makes me feel it's just not worth it. I think when you test out the world, Satan will give you immediate satisfaction. But when you serve no purpose to him anymore, that's it. Gary Bro at the end gives a talk. I cut the majority of it out, but I just wanted to show you one thing. Here it is. In Genesis chapter 3, it uh, describes in verse 7 that after uh, Adam and Eve ate the fruit, then they recognized their nakedness. So what did they do? They sewed fig leaves together as clothing. But now in verse 21, before putting them out of the Garden of Eden into the thorns and thistles, what did Jehovah do? Well, it says, he made long garments out of skin to clothe them. Now that's the ultimate of kindness. Do you sometimes feel that your best is not good enough? So, friends, the reason God made coats of skin for Adam and Eve was because they had sinned. And the fig leaves that they made to cover themselves was not sufficient in the eyes of a holy God. The book of Leviticus tells us very clearly that sin must be covered with blood because the life is in the blood. So when one sinned, something innocent had to die. And Hebrews chapter 10 tells us that the blood of bulls and goats was not sufficient to take away sin. That's why Christ had to die. So that the ultimate sacrifice paid for sin didn't just cover it. So Christ, the ultimate king and high priest, sacrificed himself so that we may live once and for all. And then he sat down at the right hand of the Father. That's what we should be living for. That's what we should be doing for. But doing things for Christ is not what gives us salvation. Believing on him is what gives us salvation. So Gary, bro, you're wrong. God didn't create coats of skin because he's a good God. I pray for the rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses that they can wake up, friends, that they could recognize that salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift given by Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. Put your faith and trust in, in him today, friends. So that's my recap for April's JW Broadcasting. Hope you enjoyed it, friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.